Perfect. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'll be talking about the work that's been going on with nested columns type parsing in Amundsen, um, talking a bit about what's there so far, what, um, sorry, what's currently in place, what I've been working on and what's in there, and then what still needs to be done and how you can get this working for yourself once it's all complete. So the motivation behind this project, starting with this, uh, starting with nested columns today, here's a screenshot of an example of what it looks like. Um, multiple data stores support these nested columns, but they're usually just stored as a string in the column type and Amundsen parses these types on the front end. However, this solution is a bit limited. Uh, you can't expand and collapse the nested rows. It's pretty difficult to navigate the page when there's many nested columns. This also limits potential features. So you can't add any kind of details to these nested columns. You can't have descriptions and badges and stats and things like that. So the idea was to improve this so you can have more options here. Um, so the plan of action, we, uh, this is just the implementation overview, I'll go into more detail, but kind of the three main areas are, um, first, we want to parse these types in data builder and ingest them as first class entities into the back end. Then they can be treated more so like these top level columns. You can add, um, allow these types and subtypes to have connections to other metadata. Um, the descriptions and badges, as mentioned. And also, lastly, do a big UI change to support these nested columns. We have a couple RFCs available. They're linked here, but they're also viewable in the repo, of course. First one is about column details access, and the second is nested columns. I'll go into more details about this with um, showing our design mockups in the next few slides. But here we have a screenshot of um, some of the data that we have ingested into Neo4j. So this is an example of a column that has a type array of struct. So you can see the blue node is the column, and then it has a type metadata node for the array. And then within that, you have its struct and all the children of the struct. And so this is just uh, the way it's represented there. So going into the design decisions, uh, we worked a lot with our product designer on this, uh, multiple iterations. So first off, just to touch on some of the challenges we found while trying to figure out best way to represent this information. Uh, we wanted to figure out how to display more complex types, including arrays and maps, because right now the current solution, it's just showing nested columns that are named. So say you have a struct that has um, children with named uh, columns, that will show the same way as an array of structs. So we didn't think that really made sense. When you're looking at it at a glance, you're not necessarily expanding the type. You don't know, is this just a struct or is it something else? So uh, you can see in this mock-up here, this is an example of an array uh, like three nested arrays. So this is a example that probably wouldn't show up a lot, but just for showing it, you have um, these three brackets to show it's a three times nested array with a struct within it with these named columns. We have a similar thing for maps where it would show that smaller row with a map and then uh, the map key and the map value as its own row. And then the value, if it's another complex type, can be expanded from there. Um, the next big thing was the uh, column details. So as many of you probably know, this um, drop down functionality is currently used to show uh, column details, the stats and uh, descriptions and lineage and things like that. So uh, we realized that didn't really work together with this plan to show these nested columns. Uh, there'd be too much going on in the same space, use a lot of vertical space. We wanna use or save as much vertical space as possible for these expanding and collapsing rows. So as you can see in this screenshot, there's a right side panel that can expand. I'll go into more detail on that 
in the next uh, couple slides from now, but um, we're just repurposing the drop down only for these nested columns and use the side panel now to show the column details. <clears throat> so here we have the uh, nested columns drop down just to go into a little more detail. Um, so you can see in the top right, there will be a button to collapse all or expand all. You can also just use the Chevron icon to expand or collapse one level at a time. The default state we've decided will just be to expand all unless we meet a configured threshold. So say a table has lots and lots of nested columns. It might be overwhelming to the UI to load it all at once or even to the user to have to navigate it all. So then we would uh, collapse by default in that case. Also from a design perspective, we've decided to add a darker background to these nested columns. So it's easy to tell which ones are the top level columns versus the nested columns while you're scrolling through many at the same time. <clears throat> okay, and next here's the side panel that I briefly touched on. Uh, so now the column names will be clickable to expand this details panel. We thought this made sense because we have this left side panel for the table details and now the right side panel for the column details. Uh, it will provide extra space where even more metadata could be added, say in the future, it's more uh, scalable to adding more metadata as well. Um, also, we were really conscious of how this would affect the space on the page because obviously when two panels are open, it's showing a lot less of the column section. So we're hiding some of the column information in the main table when the panel is open because it's already shown in that side panel. So this includes usage and badges. And also we made the left side panel narrower before it took up a lot more of the page. Now it's just a little bit narrower, but it still shows all the same information. And if there's a lot, it's just easily scrollable down. And yeah, so that's the main stuff here on the side panel. And then next project status. So this will talk about where we're at currently in the implementation. So the current state, uh, <clears throat> what's complete is all backend work. This includes all the data builder side of things, the metadata APIs, they're all done. Uh, the column details right side panel is complete. So it's uh, available now to click on the names to expand the panel. Um, currently just finished the nested columns drop down work. Uh, it's in a PR state, but will be merged really soon. And then as for in progress, this screenshot is to display what we have in progress. Um, so as I mentioned, these smaller rows to distinguish the different complex types like arrays and maps, that part is in progress. We also need to add the button for expanding and collapsing all the rows and then also use new description and badge APIs. So the APIs are available, but just not being used by the front end yet. So I just need to hook that up to display the descriptions and badges in that side panel and allow users to add descriptions from there. And um, so just to say, uh, once all the in-progress stuff is complete, then it will be available to be used by everyone. So here is a small demo just to see what's currently done. Um, this is just me running it on my local machine. And so you can see what it kind of looks like to click around. So uh, first I just expand the type to show this is has many nested types. Uh, <clears throat> and then clicking on the Chevron will expand. And you can do multi-level and, and it indents on these different levels to show. And then after that, you can click on the name to expand the side panel. If you click a different one, it just replaces the information and you can click the name again to close it or the X on the side as an alternative. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much just showing it minimized backup and yeah, that's kind of how it looks to use. So then going into the next thing. So how do you use this? Again, once 
everything is complete, this part will be available. I'll definitely add documentation so people can reference that to set it up for themselves. So we have kind of three main sections to setting this up. The first is the type metadata model. So here on the right side, I have a screenshot of the type metadata base class. It can be extended. So this class also includes subclasses. Right now we have array, map, struct, and scalar to represent the terminal state. Uh, so these are implemented, but other data stores may have other types. They can easily be added. Uh, and currently this is also only graph serializable since we use Neo4j, but it can also be extended to be table serializable or Atlas serializable or any of those other ones. And the next big thing is the parser. So uh, the parser is needed to convert this column type string into the type metadata objects. Um, I implemented a hive type parser that uses pyparsing. And for other data stores, we recommend you look to see if there's already an existing parser or grammar that can be used. So the screenshot here is showing the grammar for the hive parser. And <clears throat> so you can see there's quite a lot of stuff. It can get complicated, took a while to figure out. So really ideally, if there's one existing, that would be best. Um, but if that's not available, like Hive, we could not find one that worked for us. Um, we could, or anyone can use this parser as a general framework to follow. So the parser, you can see the signature at the bottom. It takes a um, column type, the column name, and the column metadata object itself. And that represents the top level of the type name and the parent object. And then the parser works in a recursive way to create all the type metadata objects and, and their children. And for creating the type metadata objects in the parser, it just requires passing the name of itself, the parent object, and its own type string. So again, this is really good reference to if you need to write your own, but it can be extended for any, uh, any data store. And then lastly is the complex type transformer. So this is the one that doesn't really require any changes, but this is the part that needs to be configured. So it needs to be configured with a parsing function, like shown in the last slide. And what it does is it transforms some table metadata objects. So it iterates through the table's columns to set a type metadata field, which is an optional field. So if it's not set, that's fine. Keeps working for everyone without it. Uh, if it doesn't have a complex type, it still sets the type metadata field to a scalar type for consistency. This way, the front end knows if you have this type metadata field set, it will treat it in the way of all the design that I was showing in the previous slides, while otherwise you will still have the front end parsing available. So that's not going away for anyone who doesn't adopt this. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks, everyone, and let me know if you have any questions. This is great. The experience looks so much better than what it was before. Thanks, Kristen. Um, I had a question that was related to um, the nested parsing. Um, how do the column stats display work with, with nested columns? They used to be when you expand, so now you're expanding the, the nesting. So where do they get placed? Um, so yeah, the demo that I showed was pretty bare bones. It didn't have any stats, but all of the same stuff that was in the expand would now be in that right side panel. So you just click on the column name, any of the top level or the nested column names, and it will expand the side panel and show the same information that used to be in the drop down. Got it. And that's true whether the column is nested or not. Yes. Yes. Got it. Cool. Any, uh, this was really great. Uh, huge improvement from, from the status quo. Any other questions for Krista? Cool. Thank you very much, Kristen. Yeah, thank you. All right. Open floor. If you all have any other comments, questions, we'd love to hear um, feedback on the project or the community. Um, anybody's first time being in the in the community meeting? Yeah, it's, it's my first time. Hello, I'm Yost. Uh, I'm a data engineer working for Genentech Roche. 
Um, and uh, just just wanted to just stop in and say hello and also um, hopped in from another meeting. So that's why I'm late, but uh, I'll probably be a regular attendance to this one. That's great. Thank you for joining. Uh, same here. I'm uh, new at uh, Brex on the analytics platform team. So just wanted to come in and uh, see what, it, what everyone was up to and uh, start learning a little bit about Winston. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining. We'll see you in about a month and a half at the next meeting. And if you have any questions, we'll see you on the community Slack. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.